way back in video four, which seems an awful long time ago because I keep going back and re-editing these videos as I find new and new things. I mentioned how to get angles on a piece of track. Originally I had, but then I went and re-edited video four because of an update that AnyRail made in August of 2020. In the information about the update, they talked about how you could use details on a piece of track to get the angle. Well, I looked at it and it didn't seem to make much sense to me. Maybe I read it wrong, but if you know, let me know what uh, it means. In the meantime, while I was playing around with the program, I found another way to find the angle of a piece of track. And the piece of track can be, you know, a switch, a crossover, or a piece of flex, or a piece of sectional track. It doesn't matter. So I decided to make two videos, this one, 6A, and another one, 6B, on angles, and how you can put a curve between two pieces of angle track. Now, you may never need to use this method. You may not need to know the angle of your track. It's quite possible that you could put a curve between two pieces of angle track by just going in and using easements and curves and keep playing around with it until it looks right. But if you want to place your curve precisely, I'm going to show you how to do that with a little math. Okay, so here's the demo that we're going to use. And I've got a nice piece of flex track that I inserted here. And the center of the flex track is at the center of my drawing. Now, if I come up here and I highlight this piece of track, you'll see that it, we get information down below what the track is. But if I hover over it, you will see two sets of coordinates down there. Now, just to the right of where it says inch, that is your mouse coordinates. That's where your mouse is on the screen. You'll notice it changes as I move the mouse around. The second set of coordinates is where the piece of track is on the screen. And this is reference to the center. And right now it's telling you that in the X dimension, it's 60 inches in. And if you count the squares, you'll see it's 60 inches in and 36 inches down in the Y dimension. Now that zero is telling you the elevation of the track. And since this track has no elevation, it's just at zero. If I elevated it to say three inches, then it would read 60, 36, and three. Now I'm gonna show you something here is pretty much a no brainer, but I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna insert a piece of track and I just want you to watch how the track comes in. Notice it comes in horizontally. Pieces of track always come in horizontally, no matter what they are. If I do a crossover, it still comes in horizontally like that. Let's get rid of that. So now we're going to rotate this piece of track and I'm going to show you a couple of ways to get the angle. We're going to use whole numbers because it's easier for my little brain to remember that. Let's go over here to our piece of track. We'll highlight it. Now we can rotate up here using that. We can call up the rotate screen or I can right click and call it up. And it brings up my dialog box. And I'm gonna move it up here just to get it out of the way a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this piece of track plus 30 degrees. Now, when you rotate something, if you rotate it with a positive number, it's going to go counterclockwise, meaning that the left-hand edge is going to move counterclockwise in this direction. If I rotate it with a negative number, it's going to rotate clockwise, meaning the left-hand edge is going to rotate clockwise in this direction. So let's rotate it 30 degrees. Let's hit OK. I'm going to zoom in one click here. And that looks like 30 degrees to me. So now we can check that angle by zooming in here and looking at the endpoint. Now I can select the endpoint and get the angle. I don't want to select this piece. I don't want to select the cross. I don't want to select this. I want to select the angled piece. And that makes sense. You select angle to get the angle. So let me click on that. And you look up here and it says 120 degrees. Wait a second. Now we know we rotated that piece of track 30 degrees. Why is it telling us 120? Well, let's zoom out again. Let's go over to this end. Let's see what this end says. Select the angle and it says 300 degrees. Okay, what's going on here? Well, I'm going to show you what's going on here. And we're going to do that by putting in a handy dandy compass over here. So we're going to turn on that layer. And there's our compass. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of that. So here's our compass. I have tick marks every 10 degrees all the way around from zero to 360 degrees and the angle of the text matches the number of degrees that has been rotated. 
Let's go back to this guy and let's rotate him back. We want to rotate him clockwise now, so we're going to do minus 30 degrees. And this box comes in and it shows you how it rotated. You want to get rid of that, just click outside of it. It goes away. So this is how it looked when the piece of track came in. The left hand point was pointing at 90 degrees. The right hand point was pointing at 270 degrees. So when we rotated this guy 30 degrees in a counterclockwise direction, he moved down to here. So let me show you that. Go back up here. We're going to rotate him. And there you go. It explains the 120 degrees because we started at 90 degrees. We added 30 degrees. We ended up with 120. Same thing over here. We started at 270. We added 30. Comes up to 300 degrees. Now let's put this guy back. Now let's rotate him 90 degrees. And let's go look at our endpoint. And it says zero degrees like we would expect it to. Go down here and look at it. Hopefully it will say 180 degrees, and sure enough, it does. Now, if I take this guy now and I rotate him 30 degrees in a counterclockwise direction, and I come up and I look at him, look at his endpoint, now he says 30 degrees. So remember, when you insert a piece of track, any kind of track, comes in horizontally. The left-hand side of the piece of track is pointing at the 90-degree mark. The right hand is pointed at the 270. So when you add rotation to it, the number you end up with is going to be either the sum or the difference of the number of degrees you rotated it. Rotate clockwise, you're going to subtract. Rotate counterclockwise, you're going to add. So let's say you've done a drawing and you stopped working on it and you went away for a week or two and you came back and you had a piece of track that was in an odd angle and you couldn't quite remember what that angle is. Let me show you a way to get that. And this will work for any angle. I'm just going to show it to you with it horizontally. You can always, if you have a free end on either side, you can always come over, grab a piece of track, drop it on, then come over and look at the connection point. And in this instance, you'll see it says, 90 degrees. Now, since we added it to this side, your first thought might be, well, you know, why doesn't it say 270 degrees? Well, I'll show you that in just a second. Let's take that out. Another way to do it, if you don't have an open end, is just come anywhere and cut the flex. Click on it, and you get the angle. I can come over here. Oops. Do it that way, cut the flex, and I get the angle. You'll notice it's always 90 degrees. Let's add another piece of track. Let's copy this guy. I'm going to bring him up here, and we're going to rotate him, and we're going to put him at 30 degrees, because we like 30 degrees. It's a nice, easy value to work with. And we're going to put him down here. And he's pretty close to the middle. And let's stretch him out just a little bit. Just make him a little bit longer. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut him. We're going to cut him right there. And we're going to cut him right there, if I could find it. There we go. And we look at it. 120, 120. Why does it always say the same value as what is on the left-hand side? The reason is, when you cut the piece of track, it becomes a different entity. So right now I've got three different entities here and three different entities here. And when I look at a cut point, it always references to the left-hand insert point of the entity to the right of the cut. Meaning when I look at this, and it says 90 degrees, it's referenced to this entity and its left-hand insert point. Do the same thing down here. It's reference to the left-hand insert point of the entity to the right of the cut point. We can prove this by coming up here, doing that, saying disconnect. Now let's just move that guy straight up. 
Now I've got three separate entities here. And if I zoom in, and I look at this point, I've got 90. If I look at this point, I have 270. If I look at this point, if I can find it, 90 degrees, 270 degrees. So that's why a cut point is always the same as the left-hand point of your piece of track. Okay, I hope that made some kind of sense. Let me reset this quickly. So I think the most important thing to remember is when you insert a piece of track, the insert point is going to be on the center of that piece of track. It's always going to come in horizontally, so the left hand, which is going to be the origin point, is going to be at 90 degrees, the right hand is going to be at 270 degrees. And if you cut a piece of track and you look at the angle at that cut, and is always going to be referenced to the left hand origin point of the piece of track that is to the right of the cut point. I hope that makes sense because at the end of this video there's going to be a quiz on it. That's it for this video. In video 6b we're going to show how to work with obtuse and acute angles and how to get the angle of curvature to go between those two pieces of track. I'm also going to show you how to turn those separate pieces of track into sections, then how to color them different colors, then make them center lines, and how that will make it easier for you to line up your track. So we'll see you in the next video, and stand by for that quiz.